Before we chat about the competition itself, Tony, can you explain to us the significance of having kickboxing in the European Games? It's huge. This is the first um, uh, Olympic event uh, that kickboxing will be part of. It's we're, We've been part of the Olympic family now for a number of years. Uh, not too many. Um, we're very new on the scene, but um, this is the first. So I'm part of the first team to ever wear the Olympic rings. Um, so this is this is huge for our sport. Like this is like massive. Um, this is a big, huge step. Like I suppose the next thing would be getting into the Youth Olympics, and then the next maybe even the the actual Olympics then as well. But this is a uh, this is a huge first step. I'm part of I'm one of the nine athletes that gets to go away, represent Ireland in kickboxing for the first time and wear the wear the Olympic ring. So it's uh, yeah, it's huge for our sport. The word you mentioned there, Olympics, and our, our listeners will be obviously know what the Olympics is about. The Olympic Games, the biggest sports show in the world every four years. And kickboxing is on a journey now to be part of that. Can you explain to us what's happening? Um, I spoke to the president there about five weeks ago. Um, he's Irish. He's he's the president of Kickboxing Ireland and he's the president of um, uh, Wacko Kickboxing, which is the biggest organization in the world um for uh, amateur kickboxing uh it, we're 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 now recognized by the olympics we're hoping that we're going to be in the 2028 games um is that is it a strong chance i don't believe so i think it will come at a later date again so it'll be passed when my career is done but it's looking like uh yeah we will one day be in the olympics um if we're if the earliest we could possibly be from what i've been told is uh, 2028. That's incredible. A kickboxing is on that journey, and you're now part of the one of the, the major first steps for kickboxing. And you've been a world champion twice. You fought at, at world championship level, European championships, a lot of the, the WACO World Cup series. But to be part of the European Games in Krakow, where does that rank in terms of what, what you've achieved? This is the this is the furthest I've I've ever gone. I am um, so yeah, I've won world and European titles at my lighter weight back in, I think it was um, uh, this time last year. No, no, it was about a year and a half ago. They announced that we're going to be part of the European Games. Uh, they picked two weight classes for my discipline, and now I normally fight at the uh, minus sixty nine, which is um, welterweight, but they picked uh, minus seventy nine. So I went up. I chose. I I was pretty much done my career then up until then in terms of like wacko kickboxing. I had uh, like like you said, I won my world titles and my European titles. I'd gone as far as I could, and I was ready to hang up the gloves in that department and maybe try something different. Um, but then this came about, and I was excited for ages. We didn't know what um we didn't know what weight classes they were picking. And I remember saying to Ian, if they pick this, I'm going to do this. If I'm this, I'm going to drop this weight. If I, they do this, I'm going to go to this. Um, and then they picked 79, which was weird. It was um, <clears throat> because this, most men fit into the 69, 74 kg bracket. So it was weird that they picked 79 and minus 63. So I was too light for minus 63. So I decided to jump up to um, uh, jump up to minus 79. So I've gone up two weight classes. So I went from 69 to then 74, then to 79. So uh, I this is the furthest I've been. This is the only reason I decided to do the qualifications. Like I wouldn't have done the Europeans back in November if there wasn't something else to attain, which is this, which is going to uh, an Olympic uh, level event. Like you said there, you've achieved everything there is to achieve in kickboxing, world titles, European titles, you name it, you've won it. But you feel this has re-energized you, the, kind of, the chance to do something different, the chance to be part of something special. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge honor. Um, like there's, there's so few, like there's only eight people selected in each division that are allowed to go to the games. So it was really important for me to qualify and and make sure I was in that top eight, which I was. I, I got second in November out in um, in Turkey to qualify. Um, so yeah, it's 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 so, uh, yeah, it's it's a. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. I have a good trainer behind me. Um, I'm very lucky for my family supporting me and I'm um, very lucky that I'm at this point in my career where I can see this in front of me, go for it and know that I have the skill to get to that level I want. You mentioned 
day or twenty that you've jumped up in two weight classes because you had to to compete at these European games. How difficult is that to to move two weight classes? Um, I think it's difficult. Like the like I've I've sparred with heavyweights before. Like when it comes to being in the gym and training, you would spar heavier guys and smaller guys and stuff, and there's variations there. But <clears throat> Uh, it's always different than when you're at, actually at competition. Um, now, most of the guys that I fought out in Turkey there in November, um, when they were hitting me, it like I, I took up pretty well and I'd be pretty strong. Um, but there's only one guy who's really like, okay, wow, this is different. Because he came down. So most of the guys I was fighting at 79 were well adjusted to minus 79 and were fighting at that weight a lot. But the, the the last guy I fought, he came down two weight categories above. So he came down from minus 89 to 79. And then he would have weighed in. And then five days later, he would have fought me. So he would have put a bit of weight back on. So he's naturally bigger and stronger. So that was the only time where I was like, okay, there's definitely a little bit more to this guy's punches than everyone else. Everyone else I felt like I could handle. And it's just years of experience has helped me. And I, again, like I said before, I have a really good trainer, Ian Kingston. He just knows sport inside and out. He knows me inside and out. So for every fight we had, we had a plan going in there. And it was just about me executing that plan. Um, So, like, I was conscious about lads being heavier and maybe stronger moving up to that when um when I first decided to, to go for this. But um as soon as I got settled into a few fights internationally and uh, even nationally, um, I was like, you know what, this, this isn't that bad. They're, they're not, um, the shots aren't too bad. I can take these. These are these are fine. And I'm definitely faster than a lot of these guys as well. So I had that advantage too. Um, so yeah, the, the adjustment wasn't too much. Maybe just my style and how I approach people. If they're a big guy and they're strong, I have to move a little bit more. I have to fake a little bit more. I can't be a static target for anyone anymore. Um, so yeah, th- those were the adjustments. You okay. mentioned you mentioned uh, the Europeans last November. You won a silver medal there. Is that almost a good barometer for what you're going to expect out in Krakow? Because, like you said, there are just eight eight fighters, eight eight quality fighters here. But you you got that silver medal not not too long ago. So does that put you in the medal conversation? Does that give you confidence going to Krakow? Does that raise your expectations heading out to Poland? Yeah, I definitely think I can get a medal. Definitely. Um, I want. I'm aiming for gold. I wouldn't aim. I wouldn't do this if I didn't think I could get gold. Um, yeah. The there's four. Like I, everyone who's in there, I have. I pretty much have fought already, bar one or two. Um, yeah. So it depends. It depends on my draw. I know the guy who I lost to in Turkey for the qualifiers, I know that he's at the other end of the draw, so I'm not going to meet him until the final. Um, so I'm kind of more concentrating now on everyone else because, you know, before I can get there, I've got to I've got to get through these guys. There's one or two that I haven't fought. One of them is really good. Um, but me and Ian have a plan pretty much for everyone. Um, and um, same with the national coach there. We have, we have plans set in place and tactics uh, to work. But I'm pretty confident fighting uh, anyone who's in the division. I wouldn't be or backing down it's just like the way my mentality is now is um you know uh, a fight's a fight you know nothing's good or bad it, it whatever it is it's just my value judgment on it in the moment i have to see what's in front of me work with the tactics i'm given um and make the best decisions and you know like it's more like when i go to fight it's more like about creating opportunities to score that's where i, pay, I take myself to a logical place when it comes to fighting um and i try and keep the emotions out and think okay each round is its own fight so you know i take one round at a time i don't look at this fighter and then i have to fight this guy next and then i have to fight this guy i'm thinking my first round and my first fight out there and that's it for now you mentioned one man there a couple of times in this conversation so far ian kingston in kingston uh, is so heavily involved in west Cork kickboxing club that that's his baby he's grown that club to become the the world championship european championship medal winning machine that it is Talk to me about Ian, uh, Tony, and how important he has been in your career. Huge. He's um, by far the most influential factor in my career. Um, I have a lot to owe Ian and be thankful for. Um, he's trained me since I was six years old. Um, he's gotten me to love a sport that maybe I didn't think I could when I was younger. I, I, went, in, I went into kickboxing because um, I wanted to get a bit more confidence. My parents wanted me to 
learn a bit of self-defense and get more confidence. And it was only years later when I showed like an aptitude and interest in sparring that he encouraged it. And from the environment he creates in the club, it really brought on people like myself, like Lily, other uh, champions in the club uh, to to excel. So like I have a lot to be thankful and grateful for Green. He's an amazing trainer. Um, he's an amazing role model. Like he was, a, he is still a role model for, for me. Um, just all around, he's just a brilliant person, brilliant coach. Um, and I'm just very lucky to have someone uh, as, as a kind of person that Ian is and as knowledgeable as he is in my corner uh, when I need him most, which is uh, like these are like these kind of fights, these events. So it's it's good, it's good. Like I know some guys chop and change trainers, and over the years they learn different things. It's really good. Like it's a real good advantage to have someone who is in your corner who's known you since you were a little kid. They know how you operate. They know how you tick. And Ian knows me inside and out. And um, you know when he says something to me to on command to fight, if he sees something, he knows exactly that I'm gonna listen, take it on board, use it. Um, there's no miscommunication. Like we, we work really well as a team just from years of working together. That trust that, that you have in Ian and obviously that Ian has in you, like you've developed that over years. Like you said, since you were, you were what, six years of age, Ian has been coaching you. Like that trust must be key to this as well. Yeah, no, it is. We, um, he supported me in everything I did. I remember... Uh, I remember when I had bad days in training when I was a kid he would sit down and talk to me and he would go through like he wasn't just someone who taught me the kick and punch he was uh, and he is he's not just that even now he's like if I come to him with like oh Ian like I'm teaching this class and I'm having problems with this one kid or this one parent I ask Ian and he's really good for advice and he's really good at like being logical being direct there's no like um what you see is what you get with him and it's direct and it's it's, it's, it's a brilliant way to work with someone because my job is to teach kickboxing classes and that's what Ian does so I have that older mentor there to ask and to um to use as guidance for me so that I can bring on my students as well um just yeah um just throughout my life he's helped me outside of kickboxing as well it's not just been about fighting it's not just a relationship where we just it's all about training and in the gym like i'll go to him about uh, advice about parenting or about my new house i'm trying to get for myself and my family or anything and he's he's really good good for that so he's a, he's a very approachable person he's a person that i can really um confide in and trust and yeah you you can only get that from someone who's very open and, and forthright yourself and ian you share an incredible passage for the sport it's obvious that you love the sport you put so much in the kickboxing Bigger picture for a second, Tony. What can this do for the sport? Let's say locally, you're the only Cork kickboxer on the Ireland team going to Krakow. You're the only Munster kickboxer on, on the team. So in terms of vis visibility, your students can see what you're achieving, how high you're going. That's great for them to see someone. I know Tony, who's gone to the European Games. Is the hope that this will shine a light in kickboxing, let's say locally in West Cork, and encourage more kids to... To, to try the sport and join the club and just just see how great the sport is yeah absolutely it's a really good sport um it's a, one it's an individual sport so what you put into it you get out of it um even if you're not the best in the soccer team or the best on the basketball team if you're not the best kickboxer it doesn't mean you sit out on the bench so there's no bench uh mm -hmm. everyone takes part and we have uh for like a little kid growing up you know um they get the they get like to learn really good valuable life skills i know when people think about kickboxing they think about fighting punching kicking sport you know it, it teaches you self-defense it teaches you discipline um focus commitment coordination balance flexibility um these things really then translate to other sports and other areas of your life that you then can apply to make you a better person um and like when you go through those places where things are like it's one thing to lose a basketball match or a football match but when you're in front of someone who is punching and kicking you in a competition you do develop this toughness um you do develop this okay all right this person is like there's no ball there's no you know I, I someone's hitting me i have to respond i have to fight back you know it really teaches you to become a, a tougher person uh all around and you know i know that if I have 100 kids, maybe one of them might go on to do competition, but the rest for them, the martial arts journey is important that they that they um, they learn those important values, like trying to be, become the toughest person you are 
on your um, the strongest person you are on your toughest day. And that's the way I approach martial arts is my, for, 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 for one, kick, what kickboxing has done for me uh, is given me um, fitness. It's given me a chance to compete for my country. It's given me uh, confidence and an inner strength. It's given me a uh, financial opportunity. Um, like, and, and as well, like my, my mom passed away a few years ago and I always thought, like my mentality would always be tested from, um, you know, in competition, like against the better opponent, again, in the moment of the world championship final. And no, like the, the hardest day of my life was when I had to say goodbye to my mom. And I was able to stand up straight, pull my shoulders back, help out with the family, get the day done, um, you know, and I was my strongest version, my strongest self on my toughest day. And I look back at all that kickboxing has taught me, and that really did then make sense to me. Okay, all those years of pushing myself, going out my comfort zone, talking with Ian, uh, reassessing what do I want, and like how do I achieve my goals, um, how do I fight through the bad days of training, they all helped me deal with that. And so, uh, kickboxing is not just learning how to punch and kick it's it's really way more than that and uh that's what martial arts brings to young people and it gives them structure it gives them the discipline and it definitely helped me in those areas of life and um i'm just so grateful i had the opportunity to to to, to be part of that and for our listeners to the podcast now tony to, to learn more about the sport can, can you break down what a fight entails in terms of rounds minutes to scoring how it actually works yeah, so um, we do uh, so out in the European Games, all fights will be three two-minute rounds. Um, they are you you get points for scoring punches to the head and to the body. You get extra points for kicking to the head or jumping kicks to the body or jumping kicks to the head. So one point for a punch to the head, punch to the body. One point for a kick to the body. Two points for a kick to the head. Uh, three points for a jumping kick to the body, and then I think it's like five points for jump spinning kicks to the head um we have although it's hard contact we have referees and judges who score um and there's medics and and, and um uh you know referees are out there to, to look out for the safety of the fighters so it's more about scoring points than like knocking out although knockouts do occur it's part and parcel of the sport um most fights is about scoring so it's the skill is distance timing and control so distances knowing how close you are to your opponent to get your scores, the type of scores, the type of kicks. And then the timing will be like you could have the fastest jab or the hardest kick in the world. It's no good to you unless you have the timing or know how when to throw it. And then the control is how you manipulate the fight, how you manipulate um, the, the the flow of the fight by your fakes, by uh, how well you use the ring. Um, these are all things that add up to um, you winning. So they, they definitely would help you in scoring um, the most scores. So yeah, at the end of it, and at the end of the, the three rounds, it's whoever has the most scores accumulated wins the fight. Brilliant. Um, and finally, I can see how much pride you're, you're wearing that that short with, and that it's incredible to have that that Team Ireland um, gear, not only for the week coming up and the championships, but for even after. But for you, Tony, to to be part of a Team Ireland, the likes of Phil Healy from Bellinean, who's gone to the Olympics, there's some huge names in Irish sport going to compete in so many sports it, in, um, at these European Games. So for you to be part of this team, what does that mean to you? Oh, it's just, um, I'm just very, um, I'm just very proud. Um, uh, I'm just hu hu very, just very grateful for being here. It's great to meet, uh, it'll be great to meet other athletes and and um uh, and talk to them and talk to find out their experiences and what it's like for them and you know what strategies they have when they approach their competition day um yeah i just, just one very proud to be one of the first few to wear the rings um in my sport um and two i'm just i'll be it'd be really cool just to go out and meet the other athletes as well and the other irish athletes and talk to them and just, just listen to them and 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 just find similarities and differences in their training and their competition and their mental prep. It's, yeah, I think it'd just be really cool. By far, this is the one of the most proudest things I've ever done in my sport. Like this is the most proudest moment in my sport for sure. 
Oh, fantastic. Um, the very best to look over it. We'll all be rooting for you, Tony. Thank you very much.